In the English language, we use two types of signs when writing, the 26 letters of our alphabet and punctuation. Letters make up words, which then make up sentences, and the punctuation then helps us to organise and make clear these strings of words. In ancient Egyptian, there were three types of sign, phonograms, ideograms and determinatives. The first class, phonograms, are sound signs. They represent a sound, like the letters of our alphabet, and are the basic building blocks of words. To help remember this, think of microphones and telephones, which both have phone in their name and both make sounds. In Egyptian, the circle with lines across makes a sort of softened K sound, like in the word loch. Don't worry about that H with the smiley mouth under it. That's transliteration and is covered in the next post. The quail chick has the sound oo, and the hieroglyph of a horn viper has the sound F. Put these together and you get the name of this rather famous pharaoh. The second type of sign is the ideogram. Ideograms are picture signs, a say what you see thing. The word for house is the hieroglyph of a house, the word for owl is the hieroglyph of an owl. The third type, determinatives, don't have a sound or any translatable value. They're used to help show the meaning of a word. For example, the word for man has a picture of a man at the end. The word for woman has a picture of a woman after it. If we were to do this with English, you might see something like this. Now, there's more than one use for this word. Is it bow or bow? Let's put some determinatives in. You see how the determinatives help to clarify the meaning of the word. The top one with the bowing man must be bow, and the bottom one with the bow tie, bow. Also, because the Egyptians didn't put spaces between their words, not only do determinatives help identify the meaning of a word, but they can be great to help us see word breaks. Many hieroglyphs could be more than one type of sign. For example, the mouth hieroglyph represents the word er, meaning mouth. But because of this r sound, it's also used as the letter r. And in some instances, a hieroglyph could be all three. The tongue hieroglyph could be an ideogram for the word tongue, a phonogram nez, like in the word nezut, meaning fire, a determinative for words relating to the tongue, such as taste. This may seem confusing. How do you tell whether a sign is being used as a phonogram, ideogram or determinative? When a sign was being used as an ideogram, they'd put a short vertical line next to or under it. And determinatives always come at the end of a word. In this example, the word dep has two determinatives, the tongue and the man with his hand to his mouth. But a lot of it is just getting the hang of it. The more you practice, the more you get used to telling the difference. You already do this with English. You just know the difference between taking a bow and tying a bow. So, to recap, there are three types of hieroglyphic signs. Phonograms, which are sound signs. Ideograms, which are images of the word. And determinatives, which help determine the meaning of the word.